Let us come to Almighty God in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, as we gather in your name, you remember the words of the Apostle John who said, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes on him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And we are reminded that you are not, you are not a God that shows favoritism, but that you are a God who loves all people everywhere. And in so doing, you sent your Son for the entire world. Lord, we gather to praise you and to acknowledge you and to recognize your majesty, your sovereignty, your goodness, O oh Lord, and how awesome you are and how blessed we are that you consider us worthy to receive your Son, Jesus Christ, into this world, who will suffer death for our salvation. Lord, let your Spirit be with us. Enlighten us and enlighten us. Show us your way, O Lord. Through Jesus Christ, O Lord, we pray. Amen.
and a voice came from heaven, You are my own dear son, I am pleased with you. This is the word of the Lord, thanks be to God for his word. Let us bow once more in prayer. Thy word, O Lord, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Show us the way that we must go, O Lord. Illumine the darkness so that we will not stumble and fall. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength, our Savior, and our Redeemer. Amen. My dear friends, we have entered a season that sometimes many of us overlook. It is couched between Christmas and Lent, two very significant occasions that we celebrate and we remember in our liturgical calendar. For many, Epiphany is a strange thing. However, it is Epiphany that truly reminds us and adds value to what John said in 316, for God so loved the world. Because Epiphany reminds us how God revealed His Son Jesus, not only to His chosen people, the Jews, but to the Gentiles. The season, as we call it, it begins on January the 6th. And it is very, very, very noteworthy that this is also our church's anniversary. When we celebrate the revelation of Jesus Christ to our ancestors, who would have been considered to be Gentiles. The word epiphany means to reveal, to manifest. It is a revelation of Jesus Christ, as I said, especially to the Gentiles, to remind us for God so loved the world. In the Bible, there are usually three incidents that are used around this time of the year to, to speak of Jesus' revelation. The first, of course, is the story of the wise men. The second is Jesus' first miracle at the wedding of Canaan. And the third is Jesus' baptism. This is perhaps very important because it occurs at the very beginning of his ministry. We remember in the Old Testament it was foretold that the forerunner would come to prepare the way for the Messiah. And so John the Baptist became this forerunner. And as we heard from scripture, he was proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. But John's role was foretold in the Old Testament. Isaiah 40 and verse 3 says, The voice of him who cries out, Prepare the way of the Lord in the wilderness. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And then the prophet Malachi the last book of the Old Testament says, I will send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his people, even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. He is coming, says the Lord of hosts. What we may not be aware of entirely is that a period of 400 years elapsed before this prophecy of a forerunner and the coming of the Messiah will be fulfilled. Between Malachi in the Old Testament and when Jesus appears in the New Testament took 400 years and it tells us my dear friends that God will fulfill all of his promises no matter how long it takes. So why was Jesus baptized? Jesus was sinless. Well, the first reason is to identify with our humanity. 
John the Baptist had been preparing the way for Jesus' appearance. He had been preaching boldly in the desert. Crowds had been coming out to hear him, and he had been baptizing those who were repentant, who were repentant of their sins, were baptized, and received God's promise that their sins were indeed washed away by the grace and forgiveness. In the same way today, my dear friends, adults who come to in faith later in life, as the Spirit works through the Word and touches their hearts, are baptized and receive that powerful individual promise of God's cleansing and forgiveness. In the same way today, little children are brought to the Lord and by the same Spirit's power receive the same forgiveness and faith in the Savior. Faith and forgiveness, indeed a gracious gift of God, a, a gift that was given to us through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord was pouring out that gift. We are told John came preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. That forgiveness of sins would be purchased eventually through the blood of Jesus on the cross, who as John said is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. You see, my dear friends, Jesus, though he was sinless, decided to identify with us as human beings by being baptized. Hebrews 4 and verse 15 tells us, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. The baptism of Jesus also teaches us that Jesus, who was the Messiah, came as a suffering servant and not a warrior Messiah. We can certainly understand why crowds of people came out to see John and to be baptized and to be assured of the forgiveness of their sins. Like us, they had much that was not pure in their lives much that needed to be forgiven. If we were living back at that time and place, wouldn't we too have wanted to make a trip out into the desert, to the banks of the Jordan, to hear that call to repent and to have our sins washed away through that blessed sacrament of baptism? We can't erase the past. We can't undo deeds that have been done or take back words that have been said that should not have been said. Sins that have been committed have been committed. But the stain, the guilt, the punishment, that can all be washed away, cleansed through the water and the word. Romans 6 and verse 23 reminds us for the wages of sin is death. But it also gives us the promise that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes, my dear friends, this all began on that day that Jesus was baptized. So we can certainly understand the crowds coming to see John and wanting to be baptized. What we may not understand at first, however, is why Jesus wanted to be baptized. He had no sins that needed to be washed away. He had nothing to be repentant about. John picked up that right away when Jesus asked him to baptize him. And John said, but you should be baptizing me, O Lord. But Jesus said to him, let it be so for now. He did it for us, my dear friends, for each and every one of us. Do not think that Jesus' baptism was long ago and it doesn't affect us today. It affects each and every one of us today. So he didn't have to be baptized for the forgiveness of his sins, but he was baptized anyway. He stood in line with the others who were there. He wanted the world to know that he was willingly standing with sinners in the place of sinners, a suffering servant. He had been living a righteous life for us since his birth. Now he publicly shows his willingness to serve as our substitute as our Savior. 
We might not always think about the baptism of our Lord as being a major event for us, but it was. It was part of his epiphany, his revelation, when he showed himself to be the Messiah of the world. At the baptism of Jesus, he publicly shows his willingness to serve as our Savior. For as it said in Mark chapter 10 and verse 45, for the Son of Man also came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. An interesting thing about this story of Jesus' baptism is the revelation also not only of Jesus as the Messiah, but as the Trinity, as the second person in the Trinity. We may overlook it because it's not clearly stated that this is the Trinity. But when we look at Jesus' baptism, whom do we see present? We see the Son. And then we heard when he came out of the water, the dove, a symbol of the Holy Spirit, alighted on him. And then we hear that a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And so my dear friends, today we profess the Trinity because our faith in the Trinity is founded solidly on what has been revealed to us. In the Bible and at Jesus' baptism, present at that baptism, present at the beginning of the ministry of Jesus Christ, the Messiah and our Savior was the Father who spoke, the Spirit who filled, and Jesus Christ who submitted himself for us. So as we begin our journey into the season of Hebrew for 2022, we remember that Jesus humbled himself. He submitted himself and sacrificed himself for all of us. For God so loved the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When Jesus came to
Let us follow in prayer. As we look to the future, in the midst of calamity, we acknowledge, O oh Lord, your holy presence. And we acknowledge, O oh Lord, that you are the price of yesterday, today, and forever. For you emptied yourself and took on the form of a servant, a servant who had suffered death on a cross, a servant who had suffered death for the unworthy. For as we are reminded in Romans, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He took our place. He humbled himself, identified with our humanity, not for some, but for all of them. Let us go, committed to serving our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And now may the Lord bless us and keep us. May he make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May he lift up his countenance upon us and grant us his peace, both now and even forevermore.